Welcome to Talk Tennis. I am joined with two of my favorites. And if you're a longtime listener, they will sound very familiar. But Marty and Anne from the Pete Brown Junior Tennis Program, thank you so much for joining me today. We're excited to be here. Always. I was trying to think of the best way to introduce you to and like writing these like write ups and giving your roles and everything just doesn't do it justice. You two are literally some of the most passionate, loving, amazing people doing so much for our sport. I was going to say our community, (laughs) our tennis world, like the tennis world. I'm so thankful for you guys. So thank you. I appreciate you so much. I have to say that I appreciate you. Oh, well, thank so you, kind. Michelle. That's very kind. And and um, on I didn't add this word, but inspiring is actually the word that right now I am very inspired by both of you. And I selfishly just like want to talk to you more often and be involved in whatever you're doing because it really <laughs> is um, amazing. So we're going to start there. <laughs> um, and I basically want you guys kind of to give a quick rundown of the Pete Brown Jr. Tennis Program for anyone that never has heard of it, which hopefully after today, they'll be excited to learn more. And then I want to do a bit of a year in review because you guys had had an amazing 2022. Amazing. Yes. We definitely have. It's yes. been our best year yet, I think. Um, and before we even get into it, I've been peeping. There's some players right now at the Orange Bowl and I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you guys. I'm so excited for where this program's going, for where these players are going. Marty, tell us how you started this amazing foundation. Okay, great. I could, I could definitely start it. Um, (laughs) well, um, as you know, uh, Pete Brown meant a lot to me. Um, I grew up in that community fatherless. Um, and one day, myself and two of my siblings were walking to the ten, uh, to swimming one day, and the courts that day was, were decorated wonderfully. They had balloons, banners, uh, tons of kids playing amongst the court. And we heard this voice echo through the park. Hey, kids, do you want to learn the sport of tennis? So we all look over there, and the lure was that brand new racket that Pete Brown held up. He was like, look, if you sign up, you get a brand new tennis racket. So, of course, we went home. We took the paperwork home. My mother signed us up. And that next Saturday, we were back on the court. And I never stopped playing ever since. So, um, right around 2009, Pete fell ill. Uh, He called me up. He said, hey, Marty, I'd like you to get back involved. I'm slowing up a bit. I'd like you to come out and start hitting with some of my juniors. Help me mentor some kids. And I said, of course, I was welcome. I was on board. Jumped right in. Late 2009, unfortunately, Pete passed away. Uh, so that's when I became the executive director of the Pete Brown Jr. Tennis Program, basically keep his legacy alive in that same community that helped me. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet wonderful uh, volunteers and friends like Ann Starr, who came on board immediately that shared my vision and my passion. Um, some really dedicated folks in the community that were helping Pete Brown, and we all jumped on board and really took this vision uh, vertical if you know what I mean. So um, it's really, this is really passionate to me. And one thing I want to say is, um, is Pete was not only a father figure for me, he was a mentor, he was a coach, he was a friend, and he put us in this environment to where we were on college campuses, we were at big time country clubs, we were going to over over weekend stays at at tennis camps. Um, He always had players and mentors come into our communities and mentor us and help us. And so I always knew I wanted to go to college. And I was speaking to somebody the other day, and I'm going to let Annie go a bit. But um, someone asked me, he said, Marty, when did you realize you wanted to go to college? And I said, you know what? I always knew I wanted to go to college because Pete always had college environment around. He always had me on campuses. He always had college athletes talking to us. So I always knew I wanted to go to college. So Anyway, that's kind of where, how I started it. So thanks for that, for letting me share that, uh, Michelle. Appreciate that. Yes, of course. It's passionate for me. <laughs> well, and as you're talking about it, everything that Pete did for you is exactly what you're doing for these players. And it's like, it's insane. It's amazing. I, I cannot speak highly enough. And I'm so proud of what you guys have done. And I even was just going through your year in review. And I'm like, dang, look at this. This is awesome. <laughs> It's good. Yeah. So, Anne, how did you fall into 
the Pete Brown Junior Tennis Program. How did you and Marty connect and what is your role now? Well, it's kind of a funny story because I was at our club one day and they one of the pros came up and said, Annie, I need you to play in this men's tennis tournament because somebody didn't show up. And I'm like, I'm a woman and I'm horrible. <laughs> I think it was like a three, five or something. No way. And uh, they said, no, we need you because of the lineup, you know, we need you to play with this guy, Marty. And I'm like, okay. So I, we went in there. We lost everything because of me. Marty's amazing. I was a really, really bad partner, I must say. I'll, I take all the blame. And he was incredible. But we lost, and I felt so bad about it. But during the time that we were playing and kind of in the breaks and so forth, Marty told me about what he was doing, and I just loved his passion. I thought what he was doing was terrific. Our own son went through um, – went played and played D one tennis all through college, but I saw all the advantages that he got over kids that don't have the the income or the opportunities. And I just felt like this is a good way for me to help give back. And I loved Marty's enthusiasm and what he was doing. And I just really wanted to help. So we kind of got together, we got some sponsors, got some money. We did some things to sort of jumpstart the program a little bit more and we've just been on a great tra- trajectory going up 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 and this year I know has been our best year ever. It's been a lot of work, it's a lot of love and it's not just Marty and I, it's a whole village of of coaches and people and families and parents and and the kids are just terrific and uh, the whole thing just sort of blends together and we've been able to kind of um, expand on the program beyond tennis too which has been really nice. And just to jump in there quickly, Michelle, that Annie, you very articulated that very well. Annie actually sparked our biggest achievement, I think, in the organization. She was able to uh, to line us up with the folks where we became an USTA Foundation NJTL chapter. Mm. And it took a lot of work. It took a lot of diligence. <laughs> and she stayed on it fierce. Yes. There's, there's a lot of work. And yeah. Open the door, and now we are funded by the USTA Foundation, and we are an academic tennis and NJTO nationwide chapter. So, oh, that's big amazing. Props to, to Annie for that, and and that's that's big to the program. Also. Well, thank you, Marty. It was a lot of work to try to find the right people that could help us and understand what we're doing. Because so many places would say, "Oh, yes, we want to help underserved minority kids," and I was like. That's right here. <laughs> That's us. And we're in a big city and we have a lot of kids that want to play tennis and we are the ones that need that kind of support. So I had to really go out and work that with people and sell it and send photos and videos and nag basically to say we're the ones that need the help and this is a real deal here so that that's been a big part of what I do kind of behind the scenes and of course Marty's in the trenches every day with helping the kids one-on-one so uh, we make a good pair I think Marty. (laughs) Give give Robert Holland a shout out Annie. Yes Robert Holland with the USTA Foundation has been an enormous help to us we would not be where we are without his help and uh He's just been a big, big support through the USTA Foundation, helping us with all kinds of things, uh, with tournaments and, you know, paying for things our kids wouldn't otherwise be able to afford. Um, We're super excited because starting in late February, the USTA Foundation is going to be resurfacing all our courts, our new nets, new windscreens. We are going to have a whole new facility, new benches, everything I've ever dreamed about for this facility, which is getting kind of rough around the edges. It's going to be a really fresh, nice place for these kids and the whole community to play. So we're super excited about that and um, really looking forward to a nice facility for all these kids to play at. They often go off to some different country clubs and so forth and play in these beautiful places and then come back to theirs that are kind of worn out and faded. And, and now it's time you know, that they have the same opportunities as anybody else. So I'm very, very excited and really want to give that shout out to the USDA Foundation, who's done a lot of work working with government city (laughs) to to get this done. (laughs) That's a lot of work right there. That's not easy, no. Thank you, USDA Foundation. (laughs) (laughs) So say you got to be that person, be like, oh, remember that email I sent you? Uh, Let's let's revisit that. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Well, that's a. That, I'm so excited for the new courts and to, to see the remodel, facelift, whatever um, you want to call it. It's going to be amazing. But I kind of want to go back a little bit to you. You guys both speak about the mentoring, the college, all of these things. When I've interacted with the kids that come out of Pete Brown Junior Tennis Program or a part of the program, they are 
and I'm not just saying this to blow smoke, but they are some of the most polite kids that I've interacted with. They have manners, they're kind, they're fierce competitors, but they're also like just very respectful. And I know a big part of your foundation of this is making sure that you're you're growing these amazing humans. So you've also put a lot into the mental health side of things, it seems like this year. So can we talk about that pillar a little bit? Sure. Um, I could start and, and he could start with um, some of the things we received. Uh, we implemented with our funding from the Osaka Play Academy. Yes. That really helped with the mental side. Um, but, but as you know, uh, being an NJTL chapter, it's all about sportsmanship. That needs to start from the top and trickle all the way down. And we are sticklers about that. Um, our kids have to have great sportsmanship. Our kids have to be polite. They have to treat other kids with respect. And they have to make friends wherever they go. So that's big with me. And I know that's big with Annie. And mm-hmm. we've, you know, we've had some situations not to go into it where we had to say no to some folks that just weren't, didn't share the same philosophy that we did when it comes to that. So that's big for us. So we make sure that, that kids are, that we invest in are sharing our whole vision, which comes with sportsmanship all the way down to compete. So that's kind of where I wanted to share. And I'll let Annie speak about some of the things we were able to get because of this wonderful partnership. Go ahead, Annie. Marty, tell them about Daniel this past weekend. Oh, great. Well, the I, desert. I, I don't, I want to stay on track, but, <laughs> but this weekend I was at the junior team sectionals in Palm Springs. We had two teams that made it to the championships in Palm Springs. And one of our kids received the sportsmanship award. That's awesome. From the entire, yeah. out of all the teams, from the 12 U to the 18 teams, they selected him as the Sportsmanship Award. And he, he got a nice little ring, and he received this, a check from, the, from uh, the Southern California Tennis Association honoring him. So that was big. And I thought that just was huge for our program. That's so, that's anyway. amazing, and yep. I'm gonna cut in here because one of my favorite players that's come out that is in your program. Um, I was doing some back research on her. She's at the Orange Bowl right now, and she got the Little Mo's uh, award mm-hmm. for Little Mo. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wait, mm-hmm. wait a second, Mario. yes, she was eight. I think she was eight. When she yes, got that award. I was just going like this deep dive, and I can't believe she's 12 <laughs> and she's like almost taller than me. Anyway, so yes. <laughs> You're, you've got players always getting these sportsmanship awards. And it's the second you talk to any of them, you're like, oh, I get it. Yeah, they're amazing. So, yeah, Andy, go. So, you, I guess Andy could share your second question is how we were able to really help with the mental side. Yes. And I think that was kind of sparked by our relationship with uh, the, the Osaka Play Academy. And we were able to do some really big things for our girls and, and our, our program. So, go ahead, Andy. I'll let you We know. were really excited to have Henrik Roswell who was originally um, Novak Djokovic's mental coach. And he does also a lot of work with USC and some of the big universities on the mental side of tennis, because there's so much work that's done on the courts with finesse, with technique and so forth, which is certainly important. But a lot of times the mental part of it gets left out. And having a son who played tennis all through as a parent, I would see a lot of this. <laughs> sometimes it was good and sometimes not so good. <laughs> so he has been a wonderful help. We've had him come in three times this year and work with not just our coaches, but the kids and some of the parents as well. So the whole package of how you can help your kid or how the coaches can help them or how the kids can help themselves on when they get upset or, or you know, they need to refocus on the courts. I think it's been really instrumental in helping their game and keeping them on task. And and that's a very tough part of of tennis. It can be very frustrating, as we all know, but to be able to sort of dial back into your game and and refocus takes a lot of of work and a lot of um, help to learn how to do that. And Henrik's been an enormous help for that, for our kids to be able to have that advantage um, over some other kids that are just mostly working on the technical part of the game. So that's been a big, big plus for us. And we've loved having him on board. He's been a terrific guy, really interesting, super nice guy too. So I know the kids all love it when, when we have him out. Nice. Big help. And the USC, being able to partner with the USC's women's team. You can maybe mm-hmm. talk a little bit about that, Annie. Yes, we've been able to partner quite a bit with USC, which is only about three miles away from 
our program. And the head coach there, Allison Swain, has been a wonderful help to us and been very encouraging to have our kids over. Again, like we kind of mentioned earlier, we love planting that seed when we get those kids on a college campus, and especially USC, they're all going to want to go there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's such a nice place. The tennis facilities are amazing. The school is amazing. And we've had tours in the past, too, around just a rough tour around the property. So the kids can see how cool it is to go to a college and be on a college campus. And we just love that because we think that really does give them that vision of what they can accomplish for themselves in a place that they might possibly be able to go to. And if not there, it may be some other college, but it's still planting that college seed in their head. So that's been a really fun part of our program. And they're very supportive there with uh, female empowerment for us with uh, Allison heading that up. And uh, we love that for our girls. We want them to stay in the sport, enjoy the sport, and keep going with, you know, bettering themselves, not just on court, but off the court as well. And I'm glad you mentioned that, Annie, Um, because our last activation, Michelle, um, she invited our girls over and they played no tennis. So she was like, leave your rackets. Mm -hmm. Partnered. Our, our girls up with the team, split them up, and all they worked on was mental health stuff, uh, friendship stuff, bonding, uh, things to look out for, how to keep your grades right, um, how to maneuver in times where you're pressured to, to do something ne- uh, that's not right. All these things, and they put them in groups and they listen to the kids, they answer questions, Q&A, no tennis, strictly two hours of bonding. Those are the type of things that we want to get our kids involved in. I, so anyway, that's am- no, that's amazing. And I was going to say, we work with some of the USC ladies that have graduated and now are on the pro tour, and they have this amazing little bond. There's like five or six of them and they all travel together and they're best friends and they live down the street. And it's very, I feel like what you're creating with the Pete Brown Junior Tennis Program is very similar. It's this legacy of team. And it's like, these are my best friends. We can compete, but off the court, I'm going to be there for her. She's going to be there for me. Like this, these are my people. And like probably coming around for you full circle now because you've had players graduate college. And I, I feel like even when I saw you guys a couple weeks ago, I saw players that I think are either in college or at home for college, from college for the holidays. So they must come back and, you know, it's kind of like seeing family again. Yes, we love that they come back and help out and give back. And just a couple of weeks ago when we had our big holiday event for the kids, we had a number of them. Um, of our kid, our kids come back and just to see them back out there having fun, giving back, yeah, enjoying it yeah. with the kids, talking to them about what college is like, you know, telling them how great it is and, you know, whether they're playing on, on a team or not, just it's really good for our kids to hear that and see that full circle. And, and we do love that a lot. That's a real special part of the program. We definitely have a lot of our kids, um, they know each other really well, and it's really interesting to see that bond between all of them or amongst all of them. And when we do a lot of things off-site, too, they all kind of bond even more together, which I love as well. That's awesome. Um, maybe you guys can talk to me a little bit about some of the success you guys have seen with your college players. I think there's been a lot that are doing awesome things out there. Give me, give me some props. Okay, I could, start, I could, I could take that on. Um, so, uh, Tori Bailey, who was at Howard, uh, just finished his sophomore year. He's back now, back out at the courts, working with our kids. Um, his friend, he was freshman of the year. Um, he was Billie Jean King ESPN, uh, recipient for something he's really taken on this. I think that's passionate to our organization and that's bringing, uh, equity into Southern California high school tennis because of the difficulties he had when he was playing. He didn't get a chance to play for a high school team because of the lack of competition, lack of coaches in this small little Southern CIF, LA Southern Cal area is the one that's having a problem. And he put together a solution. He he identified the problem. He put together a solution and Billie Jean King and ESPN picked it up and gave him the ESPY award. And it was presented to him at the um, ESPN studios by Billie Jean King. Wow. And so that's big. Yeah, and we've actually turned that into a project now, and now that's being looked at uh, by several big organizations to move it forward. So big props to him. Um, We have a young lady by the name of Brianna Cook, who's at Norfolk State, uh, and she was big because 
with our Osaka activation, we uh, were partnered with an organization called Modern Health, Elevate Modern Health. And it's an organization that works with Naomi that talks about mental health. They selected Brianna to go on a Zoom call, a nationwide Zoom call, and answer questions about her struggle, how she handled it, how she handled pressures of coming back from COVID, handled pressures of not being able to practice during COVID. And it was just magnificent to see her articulating everything she's learned to a big audience like that. So I was so proud. I mean, that really you know, touched me there. Um, we have a young man named Kent Hunter that's kind of been on a journey, but he was able to really benefit from some of the things that happened during COVID with the new rule changes to be able to tra- go into the transfer portal. Most of these kids were, were allotted a, another year of eligibility because of that, that COVID restriction. And he felt he had a lot of options for his fifth, his fifth year, and he chose the University of Tennessee. Now, he had interests right here in SoCal. And of course, me being loving him, I wanted him to finish his last year here. But he had it mapped out. He said, Marty, I think Tennessee is going to give me the best chance to win a championship, which is what I dreamed of. The team is super competitive and the coach is a fantastic guy. So I said, "Okay, Kent, I'm trusting you on this. Go for it. And he's having a ball down there. Nice. And they're three in the nation. Wow. They're three in the nation. And Kent's right in the meat of the lineup. So I hope his dreams can come true also. Um, last but not least, and I'll finish this up because I know you, hey, you guys are chat is, is I'm proud of is Maxie Duncan at Harvard University. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she, she had her struggles as a freshman. Uh, she had some injuries. She had a, a, some wrist injuries. She was able to get back healthy. And she just played a tournament recently before the break. She finished first. Uh, she beat a couple nationally ranked players. I think, if I'm not mistaken, she beat the 23rd ranked player. Um, and now she's healthy, and now she's really starting to accelerate. So watch out for her at Harvard um, with, with her coach, uh, Tracy. Um, so I think that's going to be big. Um, so a, a few more, too, but that that's kind of my time there. I mean, honestly, you can like gush about these players as long as you want. I think it's so cool. And like the accomplishments are amazing. So Marty and I like to high five each other every time we hear there's another one going off to college. It's like, yes. (laughs) And she's playing one at Harvard. Wow. Wow. And yeah. Wow. That's a lot. And juggling the academic load and the life load. Oh, my goodness. Um, And then also just kind of reminding people out there that they're these kids are coming from a neighborhood where college might not. It's not might. Mm -hmm. College isn't really normal. It's not normal for them to go like their their classmates might not be going to college. So the fact that they're not only going to college, but they're like kicking butt playing on a team and doing all these amazing things, getting scholarships. Whew. Props. Yeah. <laughs> really inspiring. Really inspiring, especially for this next gen. Yes. A hundred percent. We keep bringing it up. Let's talk a little bit more. How did this Naomi Osaka Play Academy partnership come together? Well, that was a lot of work, but <laughs> what we did was build out a, a very long grant with um, the Play Academy, which is supported by Naomi Osaka. Naomi has was giving out three major grants in the world globally, and one would be in Haiti, where her dad is from, one would be from Tokyo, where her mother's from, and one would come to LA. We were very fortunate to receive the one uh, for LA, and it was about 15 to 20 pages of, <laughs> of writing, which... <laughs> It was a lot of work, but we were very happy to do it, and we were even more happy to receive the grant. So that grant has enabled us to not only support our tennis program, but really branch out with things like the mental part, female empowerment, education, um, just doing a lot of things that we found out our kids had not been doing. For instance, a lot of them have never been to an art museum. So Marty and I talked about it and said, Let's take them to the Getty Art Museum right here in L.A., which is a beautiful museum. We hired a couple docents to take them around for just an hour. We didn't want to overkill it. And then run around the gardens and have some lunch. And we had a great group that day to come out, big group, parents too, and really enjoy seeing what an art museum is like and looking at art and understanding some things about it. I think it was a really good eye-opener for a lot of our kids. 
And we also did the same thing with the California Science Center, which was also under the Osaka grant, to be able to take them to the Science Center and push and pull all the levers and uh, go to an IMAX theater, which a lot of them hadn't been to as well, and see a show about under the under the sea, learn about animals and and you know fish and so forth. So I, these kinds of things are what we're really loving to add to the program um, of tennis. And we've been able to do that a, a lot this year. And especially a lot of female empowerment, because that's something uh, Naomi is very strong about and the mental part of the program as well, which is partly why we also hired um, Henrik Rosvelt. So he could do a lot of mental help with them too. So those things have been really important to us to branch out and um, really help the kids grow in a, in a different direction and a better direction to understand a lot of different things that they might not have ever had the opportunity to do or be exposed to. I would never even think of that. Like, and that's so cool. That's so amazing that you're providing things that like maybe they never, they would have gone off to college and never been in a museum. That's, a, that's really very amazing. I love it. Our next adventure will be, um, we recently bought a big group of tickets to go see the Lion King because a lot of our kids have never been to a Broadway show. So we thought, well, let's go do something fun. You know? That's awesome. Uh, we want the things to be fun and the things that they want to do. Like for instance, we had a web design class for a couple of weekends and we had them, instead of just sitting there learning about web design, we had them help uh, redo the, the Pete Brown Junior Tennis Program web design. So they could pick out um, their own, you know, pictures and things that they want to put on the site and, and you know, sort of have fun with it and rewrite some things and do what they wanted with it. So at the same time they're learning, they're also working with something that there is relatable to them and something that would be more fun. So cool. I love that. Um, let's talk a little bit about maybe some, I'm not necessarily behind the scenes, but talk to me about your coaches and who these players are, come, like where they come from and their relationship with the players. Well, I can brag here because um, I, I think we're, this is huge for us. Um, and it, it, it took a lot of work. Um, and of course, um, as we grow and as we, we keep continuing, it's more of the, the big coaches and big time coaches are starting to see what we're doing. So now the, my phone's ringing. Hey, Marty, can, can I come out and help out a bit? How can I spend time with the kids? Maybe come out and share an hour or two with the kids. And um, one of our coaches, we actually had some time with his name is Andrew Mawire, a gentleman. He's from the continent of Africa. Uh, he was the coach that he's co he was coaching Maxine Cressy, who you may know as American star. He was actually one of the coaches that UCLA let come to UCLA to coach Maxine because Maxine... He grew up coaching and Maxine said, look, I'd like to continue with my junior coach. And of course, UCLA said, OK, fine, come on in and be a part of this. So, of course, Maxine went off and did turn pro and had and now enjoyed a major, major, uh, amazing career. And we got lucky to get uh, Andrew to come out and be our head coach. So after some convincing, mm -hmm. uh, me and uh, Annie talked about this and she, we said, you know what? We need to get the best. We need to get someone that shares the same vision and passion. And he definitely did because he used to come out and volunteer his time constantly. Every time I asked him to come out, it was yes, yes, yes. So Annie, we got together and she said, approach him. Talk to him about it. And he accepted. And it's just been heaven sent from the program for our program. Not only is he bringing in this whole different environment, but he's also helping the assistant coaches to grow and to be more professional and to do things different. So it's just been a big, big um, hire for us. And I'm, I'm real, and our kids are improving immensely. I mean, he's doing some things different. He has a lot of connections out there. Um, so we're super excited about that. That's amazing. And yeah, maybe we can talk about some of the current players right now and what some of the biggest things they've accomplished this year. Well, Damaria is at the Orange Bowl right now, so that's pretty exciting for all of us. And we heard she won her first round, so I we love hearing that. I checked this morning, too. And I, I got so, a whole, so excited. <laughs> and I got a whole bunch of pictures that were sent to me, and her mom's on needles and pins and keeps texting me. And <laughs> so uh, they're all very excited, and we're very hopeful for her. And I have to keep reminding her it's a process. You know? So it, this won't define everything, but it's really exciting that she's there. That's That's a big one for right now. And, and I think your time that we spent with Hendrick was big too, uh, yes. Annie. With Hendrick yes. spending that time with her before yes. she made this trip, really put her in the right space. 
Yes, I agree, Marty. I think it was very good timing, you know, to help her because she's young. She's really young. She's only 12. And that's a tough age to get the mental part of this. So to have that encouragement from the coaching on the mental side of this before you go to an Orange Bowl is uh, pretty big. So uh, I mean, just kind of to get a bigger picture of it, like you said, she's 12. She's had a lot of success this year, which is amazing. But at the end of the day, she is 12. Yes. Um, what Was she kind of having a little imposter syndrome or just like, does she, does she realize what, how heavy this tournament is? Not heavy, but like how big of a tournament this is? Because I know I even talked to her mom and I was like, I never went to the Orange Bowl. <laughs> like this is a big deal. And her mom was a little like concerned. Like, I just hope that, you know, she doesn't burn out. And, but the second you meet her, Mari, you know, she's like, Super, like, smiley, happy to be on the court. Um, and But then you also see her giggling on the side with her friends because she's 12. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. um, what kind of, like, mind space was she in before she went, if you can share? Well, her mom told me that she's just really kind of both nervous, excited. So that's, you know, that's common and obvious for her age. But uh, I think she's a little more excited because it is a big deal to go there. And we kind of reminded her, you deserve your spot there. You've earned it. You're as good as anybody else there and have the right to win and, and beat anyone there. So keep your confidence up and, you know, just go have fun because you love tennis. And that's the main part of this, especially at her age. There's, and I reminded her mom. Don't be so nervous because there's going to be a whole lot more tournaments after this one and she's going to win some and she's going to lose some. So, you know, you got a long ride to go here if she wants to continue with tennis, which we hope she does because she's very talented and a super nice kid. And you're right. She'll start giggling on the side or, <laughs> you know, drawing. She's an amazing artist, too. If you ever seen her artwork, it's incredible. So she has uh, some other nice talents, too. We want to get her a job at Disney because she keeps writing out all these animated characters that are, like, amazing. Oh, my but, gosh. Uh, on the court, she's very good. So we were super hopeful and, and rooting for her. Yeah, we were able to really do something big for her to put her in that whole mind state. Is We signed, um, and I was going to let Annie speak to this later, but we were lucky enough to form a partnership with the apparel brand Elise. And you guys may know, because I know our, our contact said he, he, he may be coming out to visit you guys soon. But um, uh, he really liked what we were doing. Um, he was excited. He thought we shared the vision as far as community and as far as uh, achieving big. And we were able to uh, agree to a contract with him to where he's going to not only support our coaches, uh, we were able to pick two players to get the sponsorships. The Mario was one of the recipients. He sent boxes of the clothing to the orange bowl what? and met her at her hotel. So when she checked in, she was able to open two boxes of wonderful Elise clothing oh my gosh. and wear it and represent for the brand at her first round of the orange bowl qualifying. Wow. And that kicked off our partnership. Um, because not only, like I said, he's going to, they're going to outfit our coaches, uh, two players, myself, Annie, and our executive team will also get clothing. So we're all excited to really wear that brand and really, because uh, that brand was big back when I played mm -hmm. and it had a lot of nostalgia behind it. And I think it, there she is in her new LSA outfit. She's so cute. Yes. <laughs> so I really think that brand could could be big and we're so excited to be to be partnered with them now. And we're really looking forward to, to a big 2023 with this new brand. So that's amazing. Well, I would like to personally give a big shout out to Tennis Warehouse, who's been yeah, of course. mental in years of helping us with these kids. And Marty is modeling today's the latest <laughs> fashion from Tennis Warehouse and Pete Brown. We love but that. But you guys have been incredible. I mean, big, big supporters of our program. And we are very grateful because it's been long-term relationship. And I want to give a shout out to Kimber and everybody in the tennis team area because Kimber well, always... Helps out a lot. All, they they helped to spark this. She did, they shared our vision from day one. Yes, well, Tennis Warehouse shared our vision from day one and was behind us a hundred percent. And we honestly we wouldn't be able to be where we are today without you guys. That's right. And a big shout, shout out, out to Mark. I was going to say Mark, shout out to Mark. Yes. Yes. Mark, we love you. And Mark would deal with all my um, all my emails to Mark. And he finally wrote back saying, boy, you use a lot of exclamation points in your emails. <laughs> and, like, yes. and then I wrote back, yes, I do. Exclamation points. <laughs> 
Uh, Thank you, Mark. (laughs) I passed on an email last week to as many people as I could, including Mark, and um, just kind of let them know as employees of Tennis Warehouse how much what they do matters and how it touches so many people. And it was really cool from people that work on our customer service floor to even like our HR department, they were so touched to hear that, you know, Tennis Warehouse is a part of something like this also. So shout out to Mark. He is the the quiet uh, one always making the surprises happen and pushing through. Like he will not take the credit, but he deserves all the credit in the world. And he also had a personal relationship, if I'm not mistaken, with Pete Brown. And this is a very important organization to him as well. So he was um, roommates with Kali, one of our previous coaches, who was a big part of our program in college. And so I was delighted one year when Mark actually came out with his son when we had our big holiday event, which I know you've been to, where we have literally hundreds of kids all over the courts and having a great time. And I loved that he came. It meant a lot to us. I know Marty and I were really thrilled that he came out to see what we're doing and the community and the kids there and what was going on. I think um, he was pretty, you know, over overwhelmed with what was happening because there were so many kids on the courts and families and so forth. So I was, it meant a lot to us that he came out and it meant a lot to me that he was there because they, a tennis warehouse has been just so great with helping us with so many different things and, and needs that we've had along the way. So thank you. <laughs> I can't take the credit, but I will definitely keep passing it on. <laughs> and Mark wanted to be there this year. I talked to him after he actually was starting a um, another kind of give back nonprofit. He had a whole organization for something that was um, another nonprofit. So he's always, he's literally like always doing these really cool things. So I will pass all of that on. Now that we're all like sappy and like, (laughs) (laughs) Um, you also got some fun donations, I think this year from, was it Inform that partnered with you guys? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, The owner of Inform, Saad, is just the nicest guy who has helped us a lot with a lot of um, apparel that he'll send to me. And I asked my personal friends, I have a lot of friends in tennis, that uh, if they want to make a donation and then they can have an outfit or whatever. So a lot of my friends came to my house. We had a lot of people here and they made donations um, for apparel and picked out a lot of gifts and things for themselves and friends and so forth. And boy, word gets around fast in the tennis world. Everybody was saying, can I come over? Can I come over? I'm like, sure. You know, so we were able to really make um, a nice amount of money um, on just from donations from a lot of my friends and people that wanted to help out. And then, of course, all of our kids, um, our girls in the city, all got beautiful outfits from Inform. And uh, they were pretty excited about that because it's such a nice, high quality, beautiful line. So uh, I really would like to give a shout out to them, too. And it's it's I wear it a lot personally. So uh, when I started wearing it, I was like, this stuff is great. And I contacted Saad and said, I really like your line. And they he said, well, how can I help? And all of a sudden I've got like five big boxes of this stuff at my house and uh, I really wanted to do something nice with it and help Pete Brown, obviously. So that's been a big plus for us this year to have that. And he's a super nice guy and uh, really was delighted to meet him at uh, in the at the BNP Paribas in the desert this a couple of years ago. And he's been very grateful for their help as well. So sometimes it's just I found just being nice to people or just talking to somebody all of a sudden they're like, well, how can we help? What can we do? And I, I know Marty's found some of that, too. And. Tennis people are really nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, off the court when they're not competing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, exactly. um, let's talk real quick about your holiday event. I love that day. I'm so glad I got to go this year. But tell me, you guys give me your perspective and what, what makes it so special. Well, my personal perspective on that was I think you were having more fun than anybody, Michelle. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I got to beat up on some of the kids with a junior racket and a mini tennis court and the junior balls. It was so fun. Oh, well, that's my personal favorite day of the whole year because we were able to get together a lot of toys. I think we had over a thousand gifts and prizes out there on the courts and really can not just invite our kids, but the whole community to come together, have lunch, do arts and crafts, play tennis 
get a lot of gifts and prizes for the holidays. And a lot of these kids um, have to wait to open them on Christmas because that may be all they're getting or a big part of what they're getting. And just have a really fun community day for everybody. We have so many of the LAPD out there and I always invite a lot of them because I love having them hand things out and being part of the community. I think it's great when they hand a kid a toy and say happy holidays. Uh, it, it just, the whole thing sort of melds together in a very positive, nice way. And of course, Pete Brown is the one that, you know, really sparks this whole thing. But we do have like the American Heart Association there helping out. Um, we had a DJ. We had just so much fun. Everybody got lunch. Um, it, it just was a really great day. And it always has been. We've done it 12 years. And I know Pete Brown was up in the sky because it poured rain on Friday it poured rain on Sunday, but Saturday was just gorgeous. So the, <laughs> we're really grateful to Pete and all the legends up there. <laughs> yeah. proud because we're such a nervous wreck that it might rain, but it hasn't in 12 years. And I'm knocking on wood right now that it doesn't next year either. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. I got a tan that day. That was It was the perfect weather. <laughs> yes, it was. It definitely was a beautiful day for everybody. What really stands out to me is Annie really was really good with the way she articulated that. But I think it was, it's all about community for that day for me. Yes. Because yes. let me tell you, there's kids in that community that if it wasn't for that event, they would have nothing under their tree. To be able to come out um, and get some stuff, take home, have some stuff to open on Christmas Day, like Annie said, have some healthy food. I mean, I know the pizza, but at least we, we try to have some good food out there for them. Um, and some excitement, Christmas music, and just a good feel so they can go home because, it, you, as you know, it's just some tough times out there for our community. And um, just that being able to help to help and have something for those kids to wake up to on Christmas Day, that's what it's all about for me. That's my stick. Yeah. And we had Santa out there, too. He was There fun. you go. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's just good that, you know, all these kids get exposed a little bit to tennis, too, because a lot of the kids have never played tennis. So this is kind of a nice little opportunity to come out. And even if you don't know what you're doing, try to hit a ball, see what it's like. We, I think we pick up some kids each year from that. And of course, they come back the next week and there's not like a thousand toys on the <laughs> course. But hey, it's tennis, you know. So I think we do get some kids that get interested in, in trying out our program. And the beauty of our program is everything is free. Everything we do, there's no cost, no matter what we do. If we're giving away school supplies or we're sending them to overnight camp at Pepperdine so they can stay in the dorms or, you know, we have mental health days or female empowerment, every single thing we do is there's no cost. And, and it's such a beautiful program to be able to provide everything, all the coaching, all the tennis, um, and no, no cost. It's it's yeah. just a wonderful thing to be able to do, especially with these rising inflation, gas prices. I mean, it's just these these families are struggling to put food on their table, put gas in their cars, you know, get the kids back and forth to to functions, you know. So this is a big help for them. So yeah, yes. right. and and also just as we've said all along over all these years, a big part of the program is to have a safe place for these kids to go after school and on Saturdays where it's supervised, there's someone looking after them, we'll give them a snack, we're going to encourage them, it's a positive environment. I mean, that alone, before we even add the tennis and all the bells and whistles we've been able to provide, is just such a core important part of this program. It is a rough area, um, a lot of gangs, it's you know a lot of poverty. So when Marty and his group are all down there, it's, it's a safe place they're looked after and the parents are well relieved, I'm sure, that, you know, they know their kids are, are, are being in an uh, environment where they're safe. Yeah. Big props to LAPD. Mm, we love the LAPD. Yes. And uh, allegedly, I learned that day there's a lot of tennis players in the LAPD. <laughs> Yay. Who knew? Who knew there's an LAPD tennis team and they were all out and they want to be involved in us now. And I was like, Great. I know that was <laughs> the coolest thing. Actually, I guess that's what I love about all these things. And you're talking about it, too, is like the more you talk, the more you connect. And, and the LAPD guys were saying how they just got positioned in that area. And then all of a sudden they also have a league and now 
now they're working with the kids and it's just really cool. They have kids of their own and it's just like, what? Look at this. Look at us. Great. They, were, they were just at my house the other day. They, I live further away, but they said, we'll drive up and pick up some gifts and things that I had for a family that asked if we could help with that's down there. So I said, sure. And I said, I don't have time today to come down to the city because it's about an hour drive for me. And they said, oh, we'll come up to your house. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so they arrived with the, the squad cars in the front door. You know, the, front <laughs> the door. neighbors. My neighbors are like, what's going on over there? <laughs> you know? Even uh, Delfina was like, what's with the lady next door? And I go, oh, it's, you know, she's probably dreaming oh. up all these things that, you know. <laughs> and I said, I should have them cuff me and put me in the back seat, you know, just to add some conversation Drama. to the neighborhood. But oh, they were man. just here to pick up some gifts for a family in need that I kind of threw together last minute. Oh. But they were here and they were just so fun. We love them. They're the nicest people. Love so Bob. they stayed for a while. I was trying to get them to give me some of that, you know, yellow tape that says, you know, <laughs> stay away. You know, somebody's dead. <laughs> oh, man. I was going to put that across the back of the driveway <laughs> just to see if they could stir up some more conversation in the neighborhood. Oh, man. That's <laughs> But we so love funny. the LAPD. They are fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they haven't no. seen us. No, they really but are. Really cool. The the community connections that you guys are making and the safe space that you have and and all the the little the kids, all the kids that came and the parents and everyone's just having fun and smiling and it's just like this is cool. Um more of that. What does 2023 have in store? We know you're getting a remodel on the tennis courts, which is going to be super exciting. But what else? What else is 2023 bringing for you guys? <laughs> Let, first of all, I have a few highlights. I want to take a couple seconds yes, to talk about some of the please. other stuff, things we did for 2022 that wasn't mentioned. Uh, we were able to, to, to create something with the L.A. Sparks, and we had a Sparks Day where we invited some kids to go take in a Sparks Day. That was big. Right. We had a bat. What I was really proud of, and Annie, Annie led this and spearheaded it. We had a backpack and school supply giveaway this year before the fall school started. And that was huge because a lot of kids didn't have it. Was, it was a really tough time. Gas prices were astronomical. Food prices were through the roof. And to be able to provide everything that we provided from that other in those bags were huge. And thanks to you guys, uh, Michelle, mm -hmm. for providing the backpack. Yes, that was thank you. that was a big accomplishment for us. Amazing you know, for our organization. Um, we we're able to do some activations this year in a middle school and an elementary school. Um, we had a we formed a relationship with Audubon Middle School. We we're able to go there and do PE classes, physical fitness classes, and touch all of their students. So we had a five day a week, six week program where we provided physical fitness for that that school. We were able to pivot over to Marcus Garvey Elementary School and do the same thing with their, with that school. And of course, we were able to spark some interest and get kids excited about getting jumping into this tennis pipeline. Um, we had some personal growth for the organization. Uh, myself, Annie, and some of the board members and key coaches were able to go to a Center for Healing Coaching develop, Development wow. uh, Activation downtown where we learned some stuff. Mm. Me and Andy were able to partner up and, and all of our folks were able to partner up and learn some stuff about, you know, how to coach effectively, uh, how to coach, um, uh, I think, a variety amount of people, whether it's it's uh, folks on the autistic spectrum to whomever, um, and how to just uh, heal and just be able to come together to heal, I thought was big and gave us some really good tools and techniques that I thought that helped me. And, and helped uh, um, a lot of people that were in our foundation. Um, we were also were able to participate in the USTA had an activation in Orlando, Florida, where the foundation had a day where they brought uh, us to Orlando, Florida for two days of workshops. That was big for our organization. I learned a lot. We were able to take a, uh, one of our executive, uh, Robert Spearman was able to go and he learned a lot. Uh, so I thought those were some good highlights mm -hmm. for 2022 that we didn't get to touch on. One of the most fun things that we were able to do this year for the kids, we want to do something really exciting for a big group of them, and that was to send them to overnight Pepperdine tennis camp. And that was a biggie because that's an expensive adventure. But I forgot again, all about that. Yes. Yeah, I can't forget that one. <laughs> oh, that, was, that, that was huge. Yes. Because 
the kids got to stay on the campus all week, eat all they want in the door and stay in the dorms and, and eat all they want in the cafeteria and play tennis all day long. And of course, this is a gorgeous campus that overlooks the ocean. So they're literally hitting, you know, tennis balls, watching the ocean. And it's a really, really great experience for them. They had a ball. I mean, really had a great time. So um, part of my uh, hope for next year is I'm trying to find some extra money and, and raise a little bit more so we can send more kids this year because we had a limited amount. I think we sent 14. Wow. I'd love to get that number up to about 20, which would be fun because they really had a great time. And again, it's planting that seed. I mean, to stay in a dorm with all your buddies and have a great time, especially with no homework, um, <laughs> <laughs> and just play tennis and have a great time was a big deal for these kids. And I don't think any of them have stayed overnight in any kind of camp at all. And a lot of them never been to a camp. And this is a really beautiful uh, facility and camp. So, uh, and I love that they were along meeting a, a lot of kids from all over the country who come in and, you know, all different places that they're from and meet different kids. And I loved uh, at the end when I asked the uh, one of the head coaches there, how did our kids fit in? They said, great. They were just right in there. They were really competitive. They were super nice. They were so well behaved. We only had one kid that we had a problem with. And I think that was Dane because Dane had all the guys doing push-ups at 10 o'clock at night <laughs> when they were supposed to be asleep. Oh, man. So, so you go, Zane. He's like, we got to beat those guys. We got to be strong tomorrow. <laughs> so that yes. was the and only issue I heard. Wow. Yep. And Donovan won the Sportsmanship Award. Wow. Yes, he See? did. What? Yeah. Oh, that's you so had, like, cool. like hundreds of kids there. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Our kids did great. So I was really pleased that they were right in there with the groups and, and played really well and had a lot of fun. And that was the big part of it. So to do something really over the top for them like that is is definitely in the plans for next year. I hope so, Marty, because I really yeah, want to say we haven't talked about it yet. <laughs> but to answer Michelle's question, 2023, Michelle, now this is a multi-year <laughs> funding project. Okay. We're yes. running it back. 2023, mm -hmm. we're running it back. We're going to bring even more exciting activations to that community. But we're planning to run everything back next year to really show measurable impact over multi years of doing these activations. That's where the, that's where the big impact is. The life changing impact is going to be created over what happens one, two, three years consistently. So that's what we're looking for. So 2023, Michelle, watch going out right back at. Yes. Watch out. Yep. It's going to be a good year. I hope you invite us yep. back next year so we can brag about all the cool stuff. Yeah, well, we can I <laughs> hope so. I hope I'm part of it yep. too. I would. <laughs> well, and I have to say is like, you guys are both such positive people and like have this great way of sharing. And, um, I always am like, oh, wow, they're doing this and they're doing that. But like, sometimes you hear it and you're like, that's such a good accomplishment. I didn't and this might be on me, I didn't realize this Naomi Osaka Play Academy was like three people got the grant and there are three very spread out grants across the world and that yes. you got the one that goes in the, <laughs> the United States in LA. Like hearing that, I'm just like, Wow, I knew you guys had a partnership, but like that's a big deal. That's a big uh, deal. Well, tell her about oh, you, did, you missed the crown jewel, Annie. Tell her when she came out and met our kids. Oh, oh I've oh, seen yes. the picture, so I need oh, to yes. know more. Yeah, <laughs> that was super exciting because we got to invite a bunch of our girls out. She did sort of a female empowerment day thing and was on the courts with them. And then by surprise, she brought um, Tiafo with her. Just like by surprise. Know. Oh, really? So that was huge. Oh yeah. So the kids. He's, he's out so there nice running around too. with all the girls and Aww. she's playing with them. And <laughs> it was just outrageously fantastic. I mean, just. Our girls were in tears. Oh, I'm sure. Yes. Our girls were so excited. They were literally in tears. They were. They were hysterical. <laughs> well, and like props also to Naomi Osaka. She's had an up and down year. And like, if you just go do a quick Google, you see the love, the hate. But like to know that she's giving back so much to the community in this way is so cool. And it like just brings a whole other side that it really is her, important to her. It's not just her saying like, oh yeah, I'll donate here. She is there on the court doing the activation. That's amazing. That, that meant a lot to us and the girls. And I thought it was so fun to watch Naomi and Tiafo both have so much fun themselves. You know, it's kind of like you coming out to our <laughs> event. <laughs> it's just like, who's having more fun? Right the kids or, or the people right there? In. 
Yep. Well, and that's the thing too. I, and I got to bring my sister down this year, which, you know, it's, and you had your son there Anne, and it's like, it really feels like family. But what I was telling her is like, I don't care where I am in the world. I can be on a tennis court and I am at home. And that's like, what's so cool about yep. our sport. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good point. Great point. Yeah. Yes. Excellent point. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. All the feel yeah. goods. You guys, I'm just going to like have you on speed dial and be like, having a bad day. Tell me something good. <laughs> Yeah, I think every every Monday morning or every other Monday morning, at least, I like to text Marty and I'll say, do you want some good news? Yeah. That's my comment, my my line, you know, because it's always something great that's happening. And yeah. we just seem to keep, you know, growing and getting better and finding better connections or people that support the program or, or understand that if you want to be involved in something that's really working, that's really hitting the nail on the head where it needs to be, which is, you know, an inner city tennis program that's you know, working with underserved minority children, those are the ones that need the help when they need the support. It's when I go to my club, my fancy club, and I see it's supported by, you know, other companies and so forth, I, I kind of cringe because I'm like, we don't really need that kind of help, you know, that help is needed like right where Marty's planted. And that's in at Harvard Tennis Park. So we get, you know, really excited when we keep growing and finding new uh, people that want to support. I have even a personal friend that just kind of, kept asking me questions about what I do and I wasn't trying to sell the program or anything. She's a tennis player and she came up big time to help us over the next five years with a really nice um, help of money and support. And, you know, you just never know. And as I said, tennis people are nice, you know, (laughs) we love them and you just start talking to them and they're like, they want to help or do something. And I've really found a lot of that along the way. And we're very grateful and very blessed as a program to, uh, you know, be able to meet these kind of nice tennis player people that want to help the kids that really need the help. Speaking of anyone listening, if they want to get involved, what is the best way to reach out and be a part of it? Yep, I could do that. Um, well, you can visit our website um, and there's a button up there where you can click to either donate or to us to send you more information, our calendar and our website is www.p as in Peter, b as in Baker, j as in Jack. T is in Tom, P is in Peter.org. And you could uh, also reach us on all social media at Pete Brown Jr. Tennis Program across the board Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, <laughs> Facebook, LinkedIn, <laughs> Brown Jr. Tennis Program across the board. So you, you could DM us. We respond back. Uh, we love for you guys to get on board and see what we're doing. And if anyone out there that shares the same passion and vision, we would love to talk about partnering with you guys. Awesome. We'll add links. So it makes it really easy for anyone listening. They can just click in the description below to go straight to your website or all of your social and keep up with everyone because there's some crazy, amazing things happening. Um, What else? Is there anything else? I was going to I thought I had something else to say. I have some ideas, actually, I'm going to speak to you guys about offline. But every time I talk to like you guys, it's like, ooh, ideas, ideas. I just and I just want to reiterate that, Marty, you are making Pete Brown so proud in how you show up every day in life. Your bigger. Your personality is bigger than life. And it's just you're an amazing you're just an amazing energy to be around. And I really appreciate what you're doing for tennis. No, thanks for those kind words. I appreciate that. Oh, goodness. Well, I feel like, can we just like be in this little <laughs> happy place? <laughs> Do I have to go back well, to the real world? <laughs> well, i just like to say again, thank you to Tennis Warehouse because you guys have been a big, big help to us in so many ways and so helpful to our kids and helping us with rackets or shoes or in the beginning, we needed a lot of shoes. We had kids actually cutting out the fronts of their shoes and you guys helped us with that or they'd show up to play in flip flops and that kind of thing. So all those those wonderful um, donations you guys have made have made a big difference to these kids and just having their comments on board. Yeah, and to be able to hand them a racket, Michelle, like Pete did me. When Pete held up that racket, to be able to do that for a kid and see that 
that face, I have to put that in there. Can I just give you a quick story? And I don't know if she's part of the program, but there was a girl at the holiday event, uh, probably maybe six, between six and eight years old, taller. She was so cute, but she is going to be one of your coaches. She might not be a pro <laughs> player. She'll probably play. She'll play college, but she is going to be a coach and she is going to be a good coach because she <laughs> wanted to help me feed balls. She was teaching. This is a forehand. This is a backhand. I was like, <laughs> this girl is empowered to be a coach. <laughs> and it was the cutest thing to just kind of see, like, she felt comfortable where she was and who she was just to help other players. And I was like, that's you. You guys Wait. are doing that, too. Okay. That's Thanks awesome. for spending that time with her, too, Michelle. Oh, my gosh. She yeah. was adorable. That's so big. <laughs> she was coaching really me. Cool. She was telling me how to <laughs> hit. <laughs> No, so it was cool. it's amazing. Yeah. And the good things come to good people and just keep putting out that positive stuff and it keeps coming back. So I'm we're going we're just gonna focus on the good and growing and these players and Mari's gonna win Orange Bowl yes. and <laughs> all the things. More college scholarships, yep. all the things. We have free college counseling now too, so that's great. Amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. And if anyone's curious about how they can help and we can get you directly in touch with these guys and, you know, they don't they will make sure that you find a spot in the family. But thank you guys so much for joining me again. Um, please keep in touch. We can do this on a quarterly basis and just be like, update. <laughs> this is so much fun. I love this. I love it. I, I'm open anytime. We love your energy, too, Michelle. <laughs> You're just on top of it. <laughs> and happy holidays to everybody. You know? Yes. And hopefully everybody goes to Tennis Warehouse to shop <laughs> for the holidays. <laughs> yes. Yes. All your Christmas stuff. Wishing everyone very happy holidays, happy new year, an amazing 2023, only the best to come, and all the good things. And happy hitting. Happy tennis. Happy all of that. Yeah.